Hey everybody, it's Thaddeus here from Primal Hacker with Krista from The Point Retreats. And we are just on the very last day, this beautiful sunny day from the Boundary Waters Wilderness Area. We were canoeing, we were portaging. We had a retreat here that was run by The Point with Travis and Krista, our lovely guides. And we were, I mean, there's no cell towers. There's no, there's no electricity. There's not even anything man-made we can see anywhere on this entire trip. And we ran into everything from downpouring rain when we were not prepared for it, to sunshine, to getting grounded, to portaging our canoes, to let me just show you a few things as we get going here. So like this is the kind of stuff, you know, we've got ketogenic coffee for mornings and we're, we're portaging through mile long portages with this gigantically heavy food barrel with one of those canoes right over here on your back. So these boundary water portages have been used for thousands of years. So we're mimicking our ancestors. What, what we're trying to do throughout all of biohacking is like, how do we get back to the, the primal basics that are good for our biology? And here we are on this retreat doing exactly that, what our ancestors would have done thousands of years ago in the same place, the same portages, the same scenery that's still, you know, maybe it was logged once, but it's untouched. basically untouched mm -hmm. by man-made structure anywhere. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so, so Krista from The Point was leading us through this with Travis, her husband, our fearless guides, yeah. and it's been a phenomenal experience. Yeah, that's awesome. No, it has been, and I think everybody here can attest to that. Our group of eight, has really bonded in the time that we spent together. And when you're doing things without all the distractions of today's modern world, you just grow closer. The conversations go deeper, the experiences are more meaningful. So we moved all day, we adapted to the weather as we needed to, um, we ate incredible food over the campfire, we slept under the stars, we rose with the sun, and it's all just so natural here. We don't have to try and set anything up, it's just how you live out here. Um, so it is really the best way to reset your circadian rhythm. It's the best way to totally decompress and just kind of get away from all the distractions of our stressful lives back at home. And even for us, that was a really beautiful thing to do. Um, and I can't wait to do it again next year. Um, I were kind of planning some really fun um, adventures from both basic to advanced next year um, so that more people can experience it. So if you're a little intimidated by the pack Thaddeus just showed you or the longer portages or the bigger canoe um, rides, you know, we'll have options maybe for people to do a basic experience and then maybe even a little more advanced one where I think we averaged about 12 plus miles a day. Um, mm -hmm. Between rain or shine. canoeing and walking. Exactly, and it was rain or shine, and we take the elements as they come, and everybody in this group was smiling through it all, which was phenomenal. Um, and, you know, I think we have an advanced group of followers that would probably really look forward to even doing like a further out, a further out and kind of more intensity. Um, mm -hmm. So I think we're going to continue to dream up some great um, adventure alternatives for the right person and have more options in 2020. Yeah, so let us know what you think. We can either do, you know, a base camp where we've got a chef and we got food and we take excursions. So 10 mile excursions, you can experience what the Boundary Waters is as like a little taste. Mm -hmm. So you're in the Boundary Waters, you're kind of doing the portaging, but you're not carrying a, a very heavy pack and the canoe and going. You come back to a base camp. Camp. We're not having to find campsites. Or for the next retreat that's more advanced, we would have another version where we really get way out there and we're living very primitively. So those are the options for next year. Let us know what you think. Yep. And Travis, come here. Travis. On. That's our fearless guy, Travis, yeah. right here. <laughs> so he so, is the Boundary Waters expert. Uh-huh. Yeah. I don't know about that. But <clears throat> he is. I think we got a chance to see a little bit of everything and uh, weather wise and and uh, difficulty wise. Yeah. So he saw a little bit of it all. And Travis's background, he won't tell you this, so I'm going to tell you, but he is a forester. So he has his degree in forestry from the University of Montana in Missoula. And he actually worked up here in the Boundary Waters with the U.S. Forest Service. So Travis has been leading different trips up here of different sizes for different reasons for years. And so for us to have a guide like him who can see the maps, can see the waters, can see the islands, and really interpret where we need to go and can kind of cater to what the group needs. If we need a day where we pull back a little, he can take us on an easier route, a more aggressive route. Um, but he's like, um, he's the wilderness man up here. I mean, he kind of knows how to guide us perfectly. Well, just take a look around with the camera and you can, you can imagine like trying to find your way through all these islands. Most of what you see out there is island and not mainland. And so interpreting those maps of where things are and how to navigate is really important. And David, David, why don't you come over here? So David was one of our participants and uh, you know he joined us 
first time out in the Boundary Waters? Yes, first trip. So first trip, mine too, actually. So both uh, newbies in the Boundary Waters. What did, what did you think of the trip in itself and what was your experience? Yeah, it was a great chance to <clears throat> just get away and not think about things. I was talking about last night that I didn't have to plan anything. I didn't have to be in control. I trusted you guys. I'm glad that I didn't know that this was your first trip into the Bounty Waters. <laughs> it's so not far my we first went. trip, and it's definitely not my first trip. And Travis I knew, has been here even more. I knew between Travis yeah. and Krista, I would, yeah. I would be, I'd be fine. So, um, yeah, we really had a good time. Had some great conversations in the canoe and, and at night. Yeah. Cool. So, this has been just a phenomenal experience for all of us to just decompress and get out of the day-to-day -day worldly activities and just sink ourselves to nature and build deeper relationships with each other as we're coming out of this. And if you don't experience time away from the city and your job and the busyness, you never really know exactly what it's like to finally be in sync with nature. And we get to bring that peace back with us now. And then it, it almost like your body craves more of that because you, you realize the dichotomy of the pace of life here and then the craziness of, of the city life or you know your corporate life, whatever it is, kids and family and phones and everything else. And they're both great, but mm -hmm. to understand that there's differences a lot of people miss that nowadays right. 50 100 years ago people didn't have to be mindful about disconnecting but we do in the day in the world we live in now i mean we have to make mindful choices to pull away from that to to kind of reconnect us to ourselves to our own health to our own nature to each other um, and so it's important that we have a place like this that we can because there's not many of them left in the world places like this are becoming far more rare where you can completely disconnect um, so we kind of have the perfect, I don't want to say perfect storm, but like the perfect entanglement of people here. Nice. So we've got Travis, the forester, and the guide. Um, myself, I had more burn gel in my medical kit <laughs> that nobody <laughs> used, which is how it always goes, perfect. which is great. But you have a nurse on site if you need one. We've got our biohacker expert here. And we've got Heidi, who led us in a phenomenal art project yesterday that was really centering and grounding and beautiful. And then all of our guests bring something that's right. unique, too. And they have different... Um, pieces of kind of health and adventure that they bring to the group and I gotta say this group of eight they are bad asses like <laughs> there's not one person here and we were ages 40 to 65 I think that's our range and every single person did a phenomenal job with carrying their packs with making the portages keeping up with the canoeing and when someone needed a little help want somebody always stepped in and gave an extra hand but I think this group was just phenomenal I mean We've said multiple times, like, better than we could have even anticipated that this could go. 